It doesn't take much, does it, for the likes of the former royal known as Prince Harry, a delicate flower, some people might say, to literally fall apart, and more so now that he's not with the person who he totally, 100% relies on in all things in a public engagement. We're talking, of course, about the former royal known as the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, who recently zipped over to here in the United Kingdom, despite all the fears and concerns and worries about security, to attend, rightly so, a family passing. As ever, let me explain. Morning, good to see you. Thank you so much as ever for your time today and a beautiful blistering day so far. Apparently we're going to be promised some kind of uh, wonderful sort of next few days. So you do kind of think summer's not quite over yet, don't you? You've got to cling on to it. Stop laughing, Australia. I know you. <laughs> I've seen those comments making fun of the fact that I'm coming out of summer. I'm not having it. You know, look at these beautiful flowers beside me. Still flourishing. Unlike me, of course, <laughs> melting in this heat or so far. Let's, let's get back to your royal story of the day. This shocked a lot of people, but if you remember about three weeks ago, I did tell you the fact that the Spencer family were rather, shall we say, dismayed uh, by the fact that it did look like the former royal known as Prince Harry wouldn't be attending the sad passing funeral of, of course, Robert Fellows, a one-time right-hand man to our late and wonderful monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. And apparently the reasons given uh, to a lot of gossip columnists and stuff like that was simply the, you know, security levels, stuff like that. Now, obviously, Harry had a massive change of heart, and a lot of people are speculating as to why he did change that. Well, as I pointed out, the Spencer family were very supportive of him uh, when he came over to celebrate 10 years of Invictus uh, up at St. Paul's. I mean, you know, they, everybody made an effort. So I thought it would have really been sort of curlish if he didn't do the same thing. And he did have a good relationship with Mr. Fellows, who was a nice man. I met him briefly, very sweet man. But what's interesting is this, a lot of people speculating as to exactly the sort of delicate uh, situation between the relationship of the two. No, there were no sort of uh, great, you know, reunions, reconciliations, olive branches, all the usual claptrap that the mainstream media put out there. Both were there independently to pay their respects to someone that had been a big influential part in their lives, and more importantly, the grandmother and the grandfather, our late and wonderful monarch, and of course, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. But behind the scenes, things did actually happen. And according to a very well-placed source, Harry ended up sort of emotionally, shall we say, um, challenged and uh, I'm putting that kindly he really hoped at some point he would get a few moments with William where he could of course have not necessarily had that one heart to heart but at least broken the ice he's often stated that he felt he may be better off uh, dealing with this situation himself but he's not leaning up on the fact that he wants an apology this that's not going away William simply doesn't want to have anything to do with Harry he thinks it's treacherous what he's done and a terrible situation for the family more so this couldn't have come at a worse time as I told you with the particular book which is now coming out in October the paperback version which has really just reignited exactly how angry um, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales is with Prince Harry his younger brother according to that source Harry was a blubbering wreck, uh, literally around the back of the church and on the way back. Now, the bottom line is you could say maybe it was the heat of the, the moment, the emotional stuff, according to another well-placed So, So basically he couldn't understand the rejection. He felt at any given time that they could have actually had a few moments together even just to reminisce on this particular individual. But as one also well-placed source told me, well, if he couldn't do that, say, at the Platinum Jubilee, and they certainly couldn't do that at the coronation of his father, His Majesty the King, King Charles III, well, it was never going to happen. Harry, in some might say delusional mind, believes all he needs is 10 minutes alone with his brother, and more importantly, the same amount of time with his father, King Charles, to rectify all the wrongs that they believe have gone on before. Fascinating how this is playing out, isn't it? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.